As soon as tomorrow, the Supreme Court's right-wing majority could put an end to affirmative action, the precedent that allows colleges to consider a student's race in admissions. But they have zero intention of giving up the affirmative action that benefits them. You know, the conservative Supreme Court justice affirmative action, where they get the hookup with extravagant freebies like luxury luxury gifts and travel from right-wing billionaires and don't bother to disclose it to the peons they make the rules for about your silly little body that you think is your own. Ha. Ah. And a new investigation from ProPublica details how in 2008, Justice Samuel Alito popped up to Alaska for a lavish fishing trip with conservative hedge fund billionaire Paul Singer. Alito rode to Alaska on Singer's private jet, which was not included in Alito's financial disclosure form, as required by law. Right-wing dark money king Leonard Leo of the Federalist Society organized the trip and invited Alito to come with. In the years that followed, cases involving Paul Singer's hedge fund came before the court at least 10 times. And Alito never recused himself, including one case in 2014 involving a battle between Singer's hedge fund and the nation of Argentina. Alito voted with the 7-1 majority in favor of Singer's hedge fund which walked away with a cool $2.4 billion payout. The new report only adds to a pattern of ethically questionable dealings by the court's conservative justices. There's, of course, Clarence Thomas, who ProPublica exposed for accepting and failing to disclose luxury trips, school tuition payments, and real estate deals, including the sale of his own mother's home, to conservative billionaire Harlan Crow. And Justice Neil Gorsuch, Told, sold property to the head of a law firm with business before the court back in 2017 and didn't disclose the buyer's identity. When ProPublica reached out to Alito for comment, he declined. Instead, he sent his response to the Rupert Murdoch-owned Wall Street Journal, which in a journalistically confounding move, ran his angry response as a pre op-ed the day before the ProPublica report was even published. In it, Alito claimed that he wasn't aware that Paul Singer was connected to the cases when they went before the court, despite the cases being heavily covered in the media at the time, and saying they spoke on no more than a handful of occasions and never talked about any case or issue before the court. Comments which I suppose were meant to take at his word, right? Alito defended his failure to disclose the private jet travel, saying, quote, I followed what I understood to be standard practice and justified accepting the invitation because the seat would have otherwise been vacant, which I'm sure are the thoughts of many an airline passenger spotting an empty first-class seat, though no flight attendant would accept that argument. Joining me now is Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And Senator, um, I just want to read just a little bit of this report, because Alito claims in his pre that he never heard about these cases. He didn't know that this guy was on um, a part of them. This is about the fight between Singer and Argentina. The fight played out on familiar turf for Singer, the U.S. courts. He launched an aggressive legal campaign to force Argentina to pay in full debts that they had backed. And his personal involvement in the case attracted widespread media attention. In 2007, for the first but not the last time, Singer's fund asked the Supreme Court to intervene. That October, the court declined to take the case. July 8, the following year, Singer took Alito to Alaska on the private jet. Fast forward to 2014, the Supreme Court finally agrees to hear the case on the matter. The case featured an unusual intervention by the Judicial Crisis Network, a group affiliated with Leonard Leo, and boom, 7-1 ruling in favor of Singer's side. This lack of ethics by these conservative justices at this point is almost comical, Senator. Is there anything planned to be done about it? Well, first of all, let me just say that this uh, pre bottle that he put out there, I, I was actually stunned at the reasoning. It's almost as if a culture is being built up in which there's just no perspective anymore uh, in regards to these kind of lavish gifts. But the one thing I want to caution all of us is to allow this to fall into a partisan lens. This is a crisis of the court period. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, as appalled as many Americans, in fact, I would say most Americans, by uh, the reversal and of rights of things like the Dobbs decision uh, that the majority of Americans thinks Roe v. Wade should be the law of the land. But I, I, I want to just say that this is a deeper fundamental assault on democracy when you see a, the highest court in the land having the lowest ethical uh, uh, bounds. In fact, every court in our land 
has ethical legislation or ethical, written ethical laws that bind it, but the highest court right now does not. It's a court that necessitates legitimacy uh, and the trust and the faith of people. And these stories coming out, whether they are conservative justice or a, a, a progressive justice, they all undermine this critical institution to our democracy. And so, yes, there are things that Congress must do. But when we had a hearing about this in the Judiciary Committee, it fell along partisan arguments. And even then I was stunned that folks could not see on the other side of the aisle that this is not about a conservative justice justice or a progressive justice. This is about the American justice system. And so we are pushing legislation. We're going to mark it up in, uh, uh, in, in the Judiciary Committee that's going to pu put forth these uh, ethic laws, ethics laws that are common sense, that help to avoid what every lawyer knows, appearances of impropriety, help to restore some legitimacy and make sure that the highest court in the land actually has high ethical standards. But, but, but Senator, isn't it, a, isn't it an issue of, the, of the, ideolo the ideologues on the court? Because I just want to be clear, there are two justices on that court who have passed credible allegations of sexual impropriety toward women, both of whom are ruling that women cannot and do not have the right to control their own bodies. I've never heard of Kagan, Sotomayor, or Jackson taking lavish trips uh, on the dime of billionaires who then come before the court and weirdly always seem to get their way. The conservative justices seem to have a very consistent pattern of ruling in a very politicized way to get outcomes that just happen to align with people like Leonard Leo. I just want to give you the timeline here. This is this gentleman, Singer. He asks the SCOTUS to intervene in Argentina litigation. It declines in May 2007. 08, he takes Alito on the private jet. 09, Singer introduces Alito at a Federalist Society dinner. That same year, Argentina case spurs eight more SCOTUS appeals. 2010, Singer introduces Alito at a Manhattan dinner. 2014, he gets his way. I'm going to read one more piece of this article. Rob Arkley, who's a gentleman that owns the resort that they claim is, oh, it's not so ritzy, thousand a night, bragged to his friends that he'd gotten to know one third of the sitting Supreme Court justices. He told friends he had a relationship with Clarence Thomas, according to two people who were close with Arkley. In June 05, Arkley flew the late Justice Scalia on his private jet to Kodiak Island, Alaska. Two of Arkley's former pilots told ProPublica. It is Scalia who seems to have pioneered this behavior. It's Thomas who's continuing to do it. It's now Alito, the most angry partisan uh, justice on the court who gets bridles at any, um, you know, one who criticizes him. They're the ones doing this, and they're all Leonard Leo's people. I cannot see that as a both sides issue. Uh, uh, oh, it is definitely not a both sides issue, and that's not what I'm saying. And the, the fact pattern you just laid out is only the tip of the iceberg. What Leonard Leo and these extraordinarily funded uh, right wing organizations are doing to try to capture the court, uh, influencing the process, a process which Donald Trump submitted to, uh, is extraordinary. And there are so many more facts that should cause us all concern. The point that I am trying to make is that every branch of the American government should have ethics legislation. When we saw scandals in the Article I branch of government, we know there have been corrupt practices by people on both sides. The key here is to remember, when you are fighting this battle, yes, call out the fact patterns like you are. But the cure to this is not something that's going one way or the other. The cure to this is that our courts should have ethics. You should not be able to jump on the private jet of someone who has matters before the court. That is objectively, without ideology, wrong. It is an affront to the ideals of America. And for anyone to rush forward and try to justify that has lost perspective and does not understand the urgency of this moment. Democratic institutions are being attacked. And whether it is right-wing protesters who stormed the Capitol or Supreme Court justices who are violating common sense ethics, there should be consequences for that. And the consequences in this case is to fix our Supreme Court. It is losing its legitimacy. It is its lowest level of approval in my lifetime. And this is an American crisis. And so the solution to that is for this body, the Article I branch of government, Congress, to do what our founders wanted us to do. 
No branch is without checks and balances. The Supreme Court needs to be checked right now, and we should be imposing Agreed. upon them. We should be imposing upon them ethical bounds so that future billionaires, be they Republican or Democrat, future billionaires do not think that there's a well-oiled pathway to trying to influence this court, that the court and its justices are above this kind of corruption because they have accountable ethics rules that will make sure, should they step over a line, like the lines that we have cited already in this conversation, that there is consequences for that. Well, I think we can agree that they have lost legitimacy. I think on that we 100 percent agree. Uh, Senator Cory Booker, you're very kind to be here. Thank you Joy, very one much. One thing I have to say before we go, your sure. Instagram feed, your Instagram feed is phenomenal. And I hope more people follow you. I just want to thank you. Some of your posts, they give me affirmation. Uh, they give me joy. Uh, and I always, as you do on the show, give good information. I, I, I will take that endorsement on my, on my IG feed from you, Senator Booger. I follow you as well. Thank you very much. And I'm at Joanne Reed on Instagram for those of you who are not following me yes, yet. Follow <laughs> thank her. you very much. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Senator. Much appreciated. And